and that is due to go live in about a week. That's um, correct. Yep. And yeah. so, you know, uh, appreciate Scott coming all the way from Queensland. I can't miss for this little 10 minutes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and I've really enjoyed getting to know Scott from back before we were both in digital and uh, yeah, but <clears throat> both in Canvas. Yeah, okay. but we've been uh, we've been working together a lot more closely in these past yeah, couple of years. How long have you been digital now? Then? Uh, six. <clears throat> uh, I, my, well, I did do a stint on the global digital strategies team in Orlando, and mm-hmm. that was 2014, 15. So seven, eight years. Just since then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, been a little while. So I'll hand it over to you, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I might just pray for it. Still got um, pay. We would know your presence and you'd guide our discussions and help us all to love you more and to be better equipped and envisioned to be fulfilling the Great Commission uh, with the people around us. So, yeah, please guide us now. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Yeah, so I, I think Carl probably sent to you guys a little bit of a, just a explanation about what we were going to be talking about. But yeah, it's um, <clears throat> in Australia we started out with this question of yeah, how do we reach the what we might call the connected generation, Gen Z or Gen Z? I hear everyone saying Gen Z here. Is that what you're going to say? It's because uh, people listen to too much American YouTube. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> and it does roll off the tongue. <clears throat> I, I know. Think a little it Gen Z. It kind of sounds like one word, like Gen Z. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure if in this New Zealand everyone says Z. We're still Z. We're still Z. That's why we call it NZ. No one calls it NZ if you say yeah, it. Yeah, that's what know. I thought. So. That's right. Yeah, so Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just Gen Z. <clears throat> but, but yeah, in our digital strategy in Australia, we've this year just been trying to make out what are we on about? And as a, as a mission statement, it is to make disciples through digital strategies. So. We don't want to just do sharing the gospel. We also want to do the full process of sharing the gospel, but people becoming Christians and, and discipling them and maturing them in their faith and then equipping them to, to go and make other disciples as well. So that's, that's been some of the, the process for us over the last, well, just this year really. Um, but, yeah, and as I was sharing before, we have, we have programs, we also have video people, we have uh, IT people, website people, you know, animation people, all sorts of different people, but that is, those are the main areas. And we'd love, to, we'd love to recruit people in other stuff. Like we'd, love, we'd love to get a, a YouTube presenter or someone who'd be sort of a YouTube personality. That's the that's desire we have. Um, not that they're that easy to come by. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I've like seen that. a few thousand on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, we want them to actually come work for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's apparently one, 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 of, one of the um, <laughs> most desired professions of high schoolers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a YouTube yeah. celebrity. Yeah, well, <laughs> we need someone mature, not just, <laughs> yeah. not just a 16-year-old who's yeah. got a loud mouth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so but worldwide, Power to Change Tandem crew has, you know, I don't know how many websites, hundreds of websites probably, and in 2020 they had 200, over 200 million visitors to their websites. Um, and yeah, some of the other stats, they had 800,000 new believers on this website called, called everystudent.com. So I'll skip that one. Um, yeah, 800,000 new believers and, you know, um, yeah, these are some of the, the things that motivated me in terms of digital. Um, Two thirds of the world have a smartphone now, even, even countries like people in India. They, don't, they won't have a computer, but they'll have a smartphone. Um, India is really well connected with, um, with mobile broadband um, and they, create, they build mobile phones in India for the Indian market so they're actually affordable. They, they, probably, they probably can't afford an iPhone but they can afford their locally produced uh, mobile phones. And yeah, in terms of Aussies, 93% of Aussies are on the internet. It's probably similar to New Zealand, probably in the, in the 90s there. Um, 75% of the world have active social media. And the majority don't know Jesus, but they're open to spiritual stuff. So that's, <clears throat> as I was saying before, that's some of my journey into digital. Um, some of the reason I thought, yeah, I think God is leading me into this area, even though I don't know much about it in terms of the tech side, but I'm motivated about the potential for God to use it. And to use, yeah, to use you guys, um, to reach your friends and to reach the world. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. 
But the thing about, you know, when you hear 200 million people visiting our websites, it's just, it's just unimaginable, you know. How can you even think of that? And that's like, that's the population of the US, I guess, or... Close to it, yeah. Yeah, the US is kind Popular, of... Is the population like Nigeria, I think? Yeah. I eight guess. Eight Australians. <laughs> yeah, eight Australians and, you know... Yeah, and uh, 50, 50 New Zealand. 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 Yes, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like two, two Japans? <clears throat> Is that Japan 120 million? 100 yeah. Million? Two Russias, maybe? Russia's yeah. probably more than that. Anyway, yeah, but but the conviction we've got to remember is behind every number is a name. Every every one of those 200 million people is a person who has a name. And every name, every one of those people has some sort of story about how God's working in their lives and every one of them matters to God. So that's, that's the motivation you've got to... I've got to come back to 200 million people, but every single one of them uh, matters to God and God loves them and God wants them to know his, his love and, you know, and I, mm. I mentor people online every week who have mental health problems, who are lost or they're lonely or they've got anxiety or depression or even suicidal. You know, a couple of weeks ago there was a guy I was mentoring who was saying I want to take my life, I've been thinking about it, I'm, I'm self-harming and I'm not a counsellor but I'm still someone who can help him and he says I've got no one else I can talk to, you know. And um, these are people in, in India or, or Pakistan or, or Somalia or, um, you know, or Canada or the US. I haven't had you on Australia yet. <laughs> 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 I haven't had you on New Zealand yet. But, um, but yeah, there are people out there who are just struggling with life and, you know, and, and they matter to God. So um, that motivates me. So... Yeah, we had this, in Australia we were given a grant to get our, our, our church, our materials that we've created by our, our church movements arm out to more people, out to more churches. So um, in Australia we've got, apart from digital, we've got campus ministry, we've got uh, church movements, we've got youth and, um, and families and in the church area somehow we managed to get this grant to get our materials out to more people and, and digitise them. So. For a long time we've had this, <clears throat> this presentation called The Four Spiritual Laws, which was developed in America in the 1950s. And at the time it was great because people, people liked laws, you know. And in the 1960s in the US they were trying to get the man to the moon. And um, to do that, you know, you've got to obey the laws of physics. You can't just sort of say, oh, oh I'll build a rocket, well, you might get there. But, you know, laws are important for science. Um, and so the four special laws worked in the 1950s and 60s. And in the 1980s, in Australia, probably here as well, we changed it to knowing God personally, because that sounded a bit nicer than the laws. And, um, you know, we sort of changed it to the thing about knowing God as a, as a friend. Um, but then even more recently, um, we've, again, with, with the change of culture, we thought, how do we continue to make this message of the gospel relevant to young people, and we market it now as the four, uh, and it's because it's four points, and they've got four symbols. Uh, the The first one is a, is a heart, pretty obvious. God loves you. God wants to know you as a as a friend. God created you. Um, the second one, the divide is you know we've got a problem, which is sin. Sin creates a barrier between us and God, and you know we're stuffed. If we can't deal with it, you know, we can't know God, we can't have eternal life, what are we going to do? And so the third point is the cross. Jesus is the solution. He's, he's, uh, he bridges the gap between us and God and he takes away our sin. But the fourth thing is the question mark, which is we've got to make a response. You know, we can't just sort of know this stuff. We've got to actually just say, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to uh, put Jesus as my Lord and my Saviour. So we've rebadged it more recently, uh, originally from Switzerland from crew in Switzerland, but then it's other countries have kind of adopted this as well as the four. So, um, but yeah, to get this out with, it, with, this, with this grant we've been given for our church movements, um, um, we, we got the task of how do we make this available to the, you know, the connected generation, Gen Z, the TikTok generation, the YouTube generation, the generation that's on their phones seven hours a day or more. And, um, you know, my daughter, who's uh, 13 years old, she's 
different from all of her siblings. She's the youngest. All her siblings, she's just totally different because she's just kind of a generation. She's a totally phone generation. I mean, she's, yeah, she's affected by social media. She's got long COVID and she's, she's got depression. She loves, she's, her personality, she loves friends. But since having long COVID in April, she's depressed, she's disconnected from her friend, she's totally changed. So she's the sort of person who's just highly influenced by, by, the, by, her, by the, you know, the, the culture, uh, very influenced by friends and um, yeah, someone I think about when I think about the effect of culture on, on our young people and, and your kids are going to mm. be in that area in five or ten years and you know, yeah. you've got to work out how do you navigate, n nurture them through the culture as well and, mm. and, uh, and the internet and all that. And, Good on you for trying to keep him outside. Starting <laughs> 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 inside yeah. playing games and that's right. That's, that's you know, thumbs, okay. thumbs on thumbs on their phones. So, um, but yeah. So, um, so we're creating a website called the Four AU, and you can look this up on your phone. Actually, we've got a staging. The staging site is the Four AU dot web dot app. So at the moment it's our, it's, our, it's our staging version. It's not complete, it's going to be complete in a, in a week, as Carl says, God willing. <clears throat> and it'll be um, the 4.au. But the audience is Gen Z and Gen Y. Um, Gen Y, wow. Yeah, those old people. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Gen Y, Sarah? <laughs> no? <laughs> I think I might be Gen X. So which, which era is Gen Y? Uh, it's millennials. millennials. It's millennials. It's You'll kind be a of. Millennial. It's age. By just one year. It's age <laughs> twenty-five to forty-ish or something. Oh, yeah. so, so you're a Zennial then. Um, yep. Yeah. I just yeah. You know, we are we are Gen Xers and, yeah. and um, you're probably I'm millennial. millennial. Yeah. You're probably millennial in there in that in that group oh, of. I love being a millennial. That weird group of people. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, we so there, there's. Now, yeah, there's, a, there's a website, before.com, which is a very generic English website with this, but we thought we've got to create one for the Aussies. You know, Aussies are pretty parochial, like Kiwis, I'm sure. Um, we don't just want to look at a website which has American accents on it, or even British accents. You know, it's got to have Aussie accents, and um, we wanted to create this to work like TikTok. So, you know, if you've... Who's used TikTok? Have you used it, Sarah? Yeah, I've used it. Yeah. But you notice all the videos on it are in portrait mode, and you just sort of scroll up. And now TikTok is totally random. You, know, you you look at videos, and they just you get one about some little kids mucking around, and the next one is about a, a goldfish, and the next one is about you know. Yeah, Facebook are trying to copy them, I think. Yeah, Facebook have yeah. their equivalent, and Instagram have Reels, and YouTube has um, Shorts or something. They're all trying to copy it, but <clears throat> this this app we didn't want to just be like a a landscape sort of thing that's suitable for a, a desktop computer, but actually, you know, optimised for a phone. So all our video content will be in portrait <clears throat> mode for you know, the 80 or 90 percent people who are going to use it on the phone. Um, we got three presenters, who are all Aussies, but different different sort of cultural presentations. So this guy here, his name is Pastor Scar. If you're a, if you're a Twitch streamer, um, he's a Twitch streamer. He's he plays games online and he's a pastor, he's a youth pastor, but he's now a full-time Twitch streamer. He plays games like, I don't even know what games they are. Minecraft, I can see. League of Legends? Oh, no. <laughs> but he plays games online. He has a following of about 2,500 people. Oh. Every, and he, he streams most days of the week and he just plays against people and people get on there and text to him and he prays for them. He, he does a weekly sermon online. It's not called a sermon, it's called Real, Real Talk, I think. But he has this fantastic ministry to young kids who are mostly, yeah, they're probably all Gen Zs. Uh, but he's one of our presenters. He's doing one of the, our versions of the four. We've got another guy who's just a typical Aussie bloke, surfer dude. He's a student at Sydney Uni. And the third one is a young lady called Elena, who's um, Australian-born Asian. She lives in Melbourne. So um, now this guy's kind of doing a presentation aimed at gamers. Because he said to us, there are three billion gamers around the world, and there's no Christian sort of presentations aimed directly at them. 
And so he said, if you can do something like that, I'll, I'll put it out there to all my guys and you know, you'll have such an audience. So he's, he's recorded a presentation of the four using gamer speak, <laughs> kind of using some of that sort of culture and language. Um, then we've got Nick doing a presentation, which is the traditional sort of gospel presentation you might know about. We call it guilt and innocence. So, you know, the Bible talks about you're guilty before God because you sin, and Jesus, Jesus' death for you declares you innocent. That's sort of, that's sort of, it's a very Western sort of uh, view of the gospel. But then Elena, who's Asian background, she's doing one from what we call an honour and shame presentation. So, um, Jesus, you know, God gives us honour. God created us and gave us honour, but we, we brought him shame by sinning against him. Uh, but Jesus restores our honour. So that's, that seems to be very, it, it resonates with, you know, with people from Asian sort of cultures and um, some of those sort of backgrounds. So those are our three different sort of presentations, uh, different sort of cultural uh, backgrounds, different uh, demographics, but they're all Aussies. Um, this guy's actually, yeah, he's born in Australia, but his, his parents are Indian. So that's why he looks kind of South Asian. Um, but yeah, I mean, his, his parents actually work for Power to Change in Australia, so that's how we know him. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to tap into this Gen Z, Gen Y audience, uh, make, it, make it on a phone really easy to use, if you can see it on your phone. Um, and at the end of it, you know, people, God willing, people are going to say, yes, I, I, want to, I want to trust in Jesus and make him my Lord and my Saviour. We tested this last week at, at QUT in Brisbane, that's the, one of the universities, um, with about nine people, and some of them said, yes, I want to, make, I want to trust in Jesus, just from just the testing it. That's insane. Uh, so, that's... <laughs> that was pretty weird. Um, <laughs> It's a surprisingly great result. So. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see on there. There's only one of the presenters is on there so far. Uh, you'll see Nick, and the other two are still coming because we we haven't got there yet. But yeah, we just tested it with the version of Nick, and it's not totally finished, but it's getting there. But um, yeah, so this is this is kind of some of our attempt to um, yeah, there they are. So there's Nick. Nick's the guy on the left. Elaine is in the middle there, and then Pastor Scar on the end. Um, there are our three kind of presenters sort of aiming at this at this Aussie demographic. Um, what else have I got? Yeah, that's, so I said I said we're doing a, a a version for a phone, but also we're doing a desktop version as well mm. because yeah, some people can use it on desktop. Mm. Um, so that's that's the desktop version. Um, but yeah, I mean we reckon ninety percent, perhaps more, they're all going to be on phone. Mm. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah rather than. Because like, looking at the, the desktop one there, yeah, it's in uh, portrait mode. I mean, not yeah, portrait, it's, it's in landscape. landscape. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, the guy who's designing it, he's, he's, his name is Lewis, and he's he's designing it in Quasar, if that means anything to you. As a, in what, sorry? In, a, in Quasar. That's his. Quasar, okay. It's a programming background. Well, the, the language I think is called Vue. Oh, yeah. But Quasar is the is the um, responsive design framework. Environment design framework, yeah. Um, so it's it's designed for produce, producing web apps. So it's mm -hmm. it's not a downloadable app. It's actually a web app, progressive web app. Mm -hmm. um, it you know so it can be used on any phone. It can orientate. You know, if you're on a phone, it'll it'll come up with the the um, phone version. If you're on a computer, it'll automatically mm -hmm. default to the computer version. So um, it's it's designed like that. Um, yeah, we've got we've got him working on it as our main programmer. We've got people doing UX and UI stuff, um, and doing the testing. We've got we've got video people working on animators, uh, graphic design. So, yeah, we are we are trusting God with this. Our, our goal by March is to have one hundred and thirty five new believers. People indicate a decision on this for Christ, and that's actually part of our deal with our with our our funders. The people who are funding this thing, they've said. Yeah, if you don't get that, then the funding stops. <laughs> so 135 seems like a really specific number. Yeah, I don't know how we came up with that number. I wasn't involved, but just someone that came up with somehow, I don't know how we came up, but that's, that's kind of our KPI, we've got to meet that. Yeah. So when there are a number of others. Um, those want to launch the website, you want, in what time frame do they expect that? From next Friday, that's when it's going to be live. So six months, right? Oh, six months. 
Well, it's, yeah, it's kind of till the end of March. How many months it is? I'm totally Yeah, because that's six months. I suppose once it's <coughs> launched, there's not. It'll just be updating the content, because. Yeah, we'll do more testing once it's launched. We'll yeah. Now we're then we can get real data, so we'll, we'll do all the analytics on it. Yeah. We'll, we'll track very closely who who views what pages and mm. and what's their yeah. This this thing about the user journey, you know, when they come in, what do they do? Do they do they go through the four points progressively, or do they Skip chop time. chop around them, which they could do? We 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 hope they'll go through them progressively because they're made to go through. Progressively, but they could jump from one to three to, to two to four. They could do anything. They could go back and forth. They could jump between the three presenters. You know, this is all stuff we're going to track and see what happens. Um, but once they finish it, we've we've also we're, we're testing an app which is called Carry Bible. It's made by a little company in Australia, and it's it's designed to create an online digital community for a church or for an organisation. So. People who, at the end of it, say yes, I want to, I want to be involved in a digital community. They can, they can join this carry Bible thing, and we put them into small groups, and they'll have a group leader. And every every day, they can do a little Bible study, and they can ask for prayers. They can say, what am I, yeah, you know, what are you grateful for today? What are you thankful for? Um, what do you want prayer for? So that's another thing we're doing. We're trying to create an online digital community of people who go through this and want to keep them going and um, but also to connect them with churches because this is as I said this is part of the bigger a bigger project to to resource churches in Australia um, with evangelistic materials but also um, training to share their faith uh, training for pastors to build a build a movement in the church um, and training for people to kind of yeah for people to become Christians to lead others to Christ to lead others to Christ it's a, it's a multiplication sort of thing so um, yeah, look, I appreciate your, your prayers for it, and uh, we'll see where God leads us over the next six months. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, so thanks, Scott, for <coughs> this, this overview of this project. I um, just want to open up for some questions that any of you might have about, um, about this project. So, <clears throat> um, so how long has it been in the process of being made? Oh, it started in April. Okay. In terms of this, the fourth thing, yeah. Yeah, the fourth, yeah. 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 And when, when when did the, was it the Swiss? Was it Swedish? The Swiss, the yeah, Swiss, Swiss made the original version of the four probably five or six years okay. ago. Okay. So that, that was as a, as, uh, a con as a presentation. As a marketing as, concept. Yeah, as, as a as marketing the, concept. They yeah. didn't make a TikTok style. No, that's right, yeah. yeah, yeah, just yeah. the four is, is the idea or the concept. Yeah, if you look at the four.com, you can see the original English language version. There's, okay. there's a number of other language versions. You know, there's ones for Singapore and Germany and some Spanish ones in different countries. Mm. But none of them have, none of them have done it for, as a TikTok style thing. They're all kind of for a desktop. So mm. that's one of the things we're trying to see how, how it lands and... Um, yeah, and they've all got they've all they all involve video presentation, but again we've got they've got these three different presenters with the different sort of cultural um, backdrops to what they're doing. So yeah, let's see where it ends up. I'm kind of curious about because I can see little icons there at the top. Um, yeah. So with each icon, is it that they're sharing the gospel four times, or is it like? Like from the honor and shame perspective, and then just like the KGP, or yeah, how how does that look? Well, the so Nick's version, they they're each sharing the gospel, but Nick Nick does it a certain way, as I said, with guilt and innocence. Uh, but the wording of what Elena does, she's she's the lady from Asian background. Yeah. It's it's she on the device. If you oh, is this just a screenshot? You won't be able to see it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's a, a screenshot. screenshot. But I can. I, I can, don't know. If, so if there's anything up there, oh, yeah. Um, so, so what, what I can do is, um, so if you have the God Tools app, so that, yeah. that has uh, on there the Honor Restored um, Gospel Presentation. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so the Bible verses that it has and the way it presents the Gospel there are, um, uh, so it, it uh, has um, verses that talk about honour and shame. Um, Whereas the presentation that Nick does, it uses the verses that are used in the KGP. Mm. 
Right. So uh, those ones there were terms like Romans 3.23 and, mm -hmm. uh, and 6.23 and so on. So it uses those verses, whereas um, uh, taking a look at um, these here, um, so it's it's got um, Sip choose a slightly different one to say new God, but they didn't honor him as God. Um, so they're focusing more on the honor and shame uh, side of things. Uh, and for Pastor Scars, well, I, I don't know what he's done for that. He, he's just done it kind of, it's pretty simple. It's, it's, it's shorter than the other ones. It's kind of pretty abbreviated, but he just, uh, he does it a bit like mixed version, but, but just a bit different language. And yeah, he talks about levels. So yeah. if you're gamers, if you're a gamer, that I, I get, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> you often have, you go through different levels. So you start at level one, then two, then three, and then twenty, on, twenty six, on the game, yeah. twenty six, and whatever. Um, so he talks about them as different levels, because yeah, you you progress through different levels when you're a gamer, apparently. Yeah. And um, so he he uses that sort of language, and he talks about taking hit points. Yeah, right. <laughs> Me like sin, you know. Yeah. Sin is taking hit points, apparently, like that. Yeah. And not, and not getting that sounds, this sounds pretty reasonable, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's using some of those Jump, anal yeah. analogies. Because yeah. as I said, he, he does this weekly talk to gamers about the gospel in some way. So he's, I'm sure he's got lots of analogies that he's tested and used with the people. And, yeah. and so he's translated it for that audience. Yeah, he's trying to make it sort yeah. of understandable for this audience of yeah. people who... Um, yeah, just spend hours and hours and there every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that slide there might be a little bit confusing there. It isn't that next doing the one about God's love. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, these, these are just some of our thumbnails for our yeah. videos. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, that's okay. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can see how, I can see how it might be confusing about that. Yeah, once it's finished, you'll yeah. see there's the three presenters. Each presenter does four point, the four points. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so, it's, so it's the crossed one there about salvation. Yeah. 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 But they, they used to do four, four points. Yeah. So I know, I know that's probably yeah. so, so there's just four different presenters presenting the same four points three, in three. Sorry, three, three different three presenters. presenters yeah. Four yeah. points. Yeah. Presenting yeah. all four points in, in the course ways. of their video. Yeah. And are their videos the length of a TikTok video? Ooh, short, that's a very short. good question. <laughs> they're, they're the short. TikToks are 30 seconds, I think. Aren't yeah, they? they're, they're one to two minutes. Okay. Short as it can get. Yeah, it was very hard to get it much shorter. And yeah. any shorter, you just sort of lose a lot of content. And you know, mm. you could make it really short, but then just have no, no content, nothing to think about. So yeah. True. you've got to, you got to have some sort of content in there. Yeah, right. And we have, yeah, you, know, you would have seen there on, on the right hand side. Mm. There's a bit of there's text as well. There's Bible verses. So yeah, yeah. People, we we found in testing, no one looks at the text. Yeah. <laughs> you well, could, all that testing last week, yeah. they just, they watched the videos, they never looked at the text. Yeah. So. Um, that was interesting to see. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I did some training in using God Tools, a gospel presentation, just yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago. And one of the comments I had there was about, um, uh, does it have in any way for people who um, uh, maybe have you know, accessibility issues, like say problems with their either their sight or their hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, like speaking out, the um the presentation there and so something like this it does actually speak it out um which for someone who has sight issues um is actually really useful yeah is it available in braille or not today on the phone <laughs> on the <laughs> phone, <laughs> braille on the phone. <laughs> yeah. this, one, of, one of the things that this did, did bring to mind as well is that um you can doing a sign language version of it is something that would be of value and you might think well, why do you need a sign language version but people who are profoundly deaf um, often uh, struggle with reading because of the phonetic aspect of reading hmm. um, and so and so having sign language in the corner on videos actually does make a lot of sense yeah we've, that would certainly be not difficult to do yeah yeah we talked about for Australia, even doing different language versions, so yeah. you know, doing a Cantonese version, doing doing Chinese, those are the, probably the two that would be yeah. the most immediately desirable. And we've got we've got people in Power to Change who who could do that, who speak those fluently, so we could they could record it. We've got the we've got the app as a 
as a structure. Yeah. Mm. Um, you just got to create new video content and yeah. and put it in. So that's that's some of the things that are coming. But yeah, we we had this very tight deadline of September sixteen that we needed to yeah. skip to. And there's lots of things we could do, which we're not doing at the moment. We've kind of got a list mm. of stuff we can do down the track. Uh, but for the moment, we have to sort of. Yeah. So fix, this is, this fix, is our scope fix scope, yeah, fix, yeah. Fix the scope, as, as Agile says. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fix your scope, fix your time, fix your cost, and then vary the. Mm. Sorry, not fix the scope. Fix it. We fix our time and our cost. Yeah, yeah. And the scope is kind of we do what we can. Yeah. By the by the deadline, and then we do other stuff later. Yeah. God willing, if if the funding continues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God willing, always God willing. Yeah. yeah. Do you speak any languages other than English, Sarah? Um. Not fluently. Not fluently, yes. yeah. <laughs> German. German. I oh, can't okay. speak on this oh. English. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have a filthy guess. Oh, I can't speak Deutsch. Oh, yeah. No, a little bit. I also. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> so, I bet I'm not going to do a German version of this. I'm not going to attempt that. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. It's, oh, yeah, it's very cool. So, yeah. so one thing I'm, I'm a bit interested in, Scott, that mm. you didn't talk much about was how this connects with churches. Um, yeah, yeah, I know there's lots of things I didn't mention. So, yeah. um, and our online viewers might be interested. Yeah, well, yeah. so one of, one of the marketing tools is this wristband. So we've just ordered 10,000 of these. We've got them in our warehouse in Melbourne, but... Um, and we, we're going to train, so my church um, in, in Toowoomba, um, I'm, I'm a youth group leader and in fourth term, in, from October, we're going to train our youth to, to use this tool. And so we're going to give each of the, the youth, probably 50 of them, one of these wristbands and say, please wear it to school. And before too long, people ask you, what's this all about? You know, and I mean, my, my family's not Christian, um, but I've been wearing this this year and They've all asked me, what's this all about? And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to push hard because I know. So I just say, you know, this, this is um, it's a new website we're developing and there are four points here about what it means to be a Christian. And I just sort of stop there and I say, I'm going to see if they take the bait. Yeah. <laughs> they do. They do. They yeah. say, what, what are the four points? So Scott, tell me what they mean. So then you can say, well, but, well you could ask them, what do you think it means? You know? <laughs> or you could just say, the first point is God loves you. And he created you to know him. Uh, and then you go. The second point is that the divided symbol means we've sinned against him and that's, a, that's broken the relationship and we're in a bit of a pickle. The third point is Jesus is, the, is God's solution um, because he died on the cross for us, etc. And then the fourth point is you've got to make a response. So, yeah, I've, I've been able to share the gospel. That, that, that was fast. It was like 15 seconds. Yeah, and it's yeah, pretty that's for a TikTok they, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can ask you to expand on it if you want to or they might just say, hmm. Which is what my family says, they just say, hmm. <laughs> but at least it's, you know, it gets them, them talking. Because people, you know, kids wear all sorts of wristbands. They wear, you know, my daughter's wearing one that says soccer to sarcoma. So sarcoma is a really bad um, cancer. My, my nephew died from sarcoma last December. And so my wider family is very keen about research into sarcoma. So my daughter wears one that says soccer to sarcoma. So it's a... It's a slogan for fundraising for sarcoma research. Yeah. But kids, kids wear, you know, all manner of weird things like that. And they may as well just add this to it. And, yeah. and so we'll train the kids to have conversations with their friends, just in that way that I did. And, 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 child and, and, and point them to the website. So, you know, you can, you can explain it in 30 seconds. Or you can say, oh, check out the website. I don't know what to say. You know, or you can, you know. I wonder what a Kiwi version of this would look like, Carl. Yes, well, we, um, Scott and I have chatted. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could just take the source and just copy paste it, and then you could, I mean, yeah. oh, it's trivial, right? You just got to yeah. make video content that's from we, Kiwiized. And we have a videographer here um, yeah, in tandem. You could, you so. could make a, a, a Caucasian Kiwi version, you could make a Maori yeah, as well, or whatever um, your main, that's yeah. right. whatever your main demographics are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah, you, so you yeah, yeah. some well-known Kiwi Christians like Petra, I guess, and others maybe? Um, yeah, we, we, 
Yeah. Well, these, these are not well-known people. people. These are just, no, these yeah, are just people. regular old Yeah, we're not getting celebrities here. You want to use people, people's, they don't know their face. They're not yeah. being sold something, you know, yeah. like they're just anonymous people that are sharing yeah. their stories. It, it, yeah, it works well if people take it off and they think that's someone like me. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's not yeah. a fancy person. Yeah, but even just, even just having one New Zealand one where there's someone with a Kiwi accent where you know, they'll, they'll talk about our problem is sin, not sin. Um. <laughs> yeah, <it's> sin. <laughs> yeah, you can say sin. sin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you said it right. The problem is sin. I know how to say it. You might get sunburnt. Sunburnt. God sent his only son to save us from our son. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think there'd be a lot of value in, cre- in um, and creating a one with a Kiwi accent, um, at least, and then you can see a Pacifica one. Yeah. Would that will be one that I think, actually, maybe even a Pacifica one might be a better one for New Zealand to do first, because that would also speak to us in, in, in Pacifica in English. In English, yeah. Yeah, with a Pacifica sort of. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so Pacifica could be along that power fair dynamic. Yeah. Um, uh, because uh, yeah, there's another presentation on God Tools which is Power and Fear talks about yeah, the kind of coming from the Anglo to evil spirits and their, their influence in people's lives and um, honouring your ancestors and, and stuff like that so that's another dichotomy of yeah. cultural dichotomy yeah. Yeah. it talks about how Jesus so the idea is that Jesus has defeated all of our enemies on the cross mm. um, and so it speaks very strongly to people who come from animistic backgrounds, right. places where there's witchcraft, um, yeah. and which is basically, or, you know, those sorts of things. Also places where you get a lot of corruption and bribery. So it, it means that people's lives end up being quite, um, uh, you know, chaotic because you just don't know what to expect from, you know, either, you know, people cursing you or... The, the authorities just suddenly for no reason oppressing you mm. um, and and so people from those sorts of backgrounds identify very strongly with um, uh, with the idea that Jesus defeated all of our enemies on the cross yeah mm. so but um, mm. but, this, but I was saying especially because there's a large Pacifica um, diaspora in Australia as well as yeah. New Zealand they're all playing um, rugby league for New Zealand (laughs) they're playing in the Australian well rather they play for Australia (laughs) they're naturalised and they they play they play state of origin a lot of of them also play for New Zealand (laughs) in Australia (laughs) yes Um, uh, so uh, so I I could see that that would this is just talking about it now that would Mm. actually be uh, something where we could partner on very easily yeah for sure Yeah. yeah the software the structure software is all there. Yeah, that's right. It's just a case of getting it recorded. We've just inv- yeah. invested in a whole bunch of new video equipment here, yeah. here in New Zealand. You have to write a script. You have to find the right presenters. And yep, um, yeah, like we, have, we have Pacific. You have to have an app as well, uh, an app once it's all for it. Yeah. Oh, no, we wouldn't. We just we just build all what, what Australia uses. Yeah, they've already got. Yeah, you can make a four dot NZ, I presume. Or yeah, yeah. Oh, true. Have you got yeah. just dot NZ, or have it be dot? Yeah, we've got dot oh. NZ. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. You just do. It's just recently now. We've, you can just have dot au. Yeah, well, um, I've I've had a I've had UD dot NZ as a domain name for several years. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm. Yeah. So if I need right. to get brand at UD dot NZ. So you, I could give you brain at UD.NZ. <laughs> I, I have Carl at UD.NZ, so you can't have that one. <laughs> uh, is this for special pricing so you can get Microsoft Office for cheaper? I don't use proprietary software, but yeah. Um, um, Office 365. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah. yeah. That would be a really good idea. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, we, we have Pacifica staff um, here at Tandem, mm. so... Mm. It will be it will be really easy to get um, get someone authentic to give that presentation. Yeah. You know, even we can also do a young, like a young sort of outdoor white guy as well. We, we could <laughs> yeah. we could do our own version of your Aussie backyard boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, get someone from yeah. Yeah. from Dunedin or from Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we could. Yeah, or someone from Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Get a yeah. Jaffa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So this um yeah. 
there's, there's a lot of potential for that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're doing things, even like putting like mana in there um, when, when it talks about power or authority, but like Pastor Scar has done with adapting it for a gamer audience. There are some yeah. of these words like mana, um, you know, and whanau, um, which is the Māori word family, that um, you know, some ones will say ainga, um, mm. uh, that, that are understood by just about all New Zealanders. Uh, and what so, does mana mean? Mana means it's energy? just sort of halfway between power and authority. Energy. You're a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> are, you going, are you going down the, the uh, are you going down the like gaming route here, or are you going well, down the like Maori cultural route? Well, here? I, I was saying more the Maori, or the Pacific culture, because all across the Pacific, the mana is a word that's all across the Pacific. Even in Fiji, which is not Polynesian, mm. they use the word mana. And they understand what it means. And so, in between power and authority, it has some connotations of both. Mm. Um, but uh, but by by using words like that in a gospel presentation, it makes it authentic mm. to a Pacific audience. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Ian, did you have any questions? Uh, no. Yeah. I think so, no. Oh, so I, I guess you will have this on um, at Paul Beyond, uh, as well as uh, the desktop version, you'll have it on uh, iPhone and Android. No, it won't be a, it won't be a, a downloadable app, it'll just be a web app. Oh, oh it'll be a web version. It's a pre progressive web app, so... It's oh, just on the domain. And you just access there. it through the domain, and I think it, I think it means it, it can download to your phone if you want to, so you can... Use it offline. I'm not sure. Put, put a shortcut there. But yeah, yeah. it'll be. Phone, yeah. It'll be that way. It can yeah, it can be used on any phone. You don't have to worry about. Because yeah, if you if you put it on iTunes, you have to pay money. There's lots of regulations. Um, and you got to keep on updating your app as yeah. as, uh, so as Apple keep on updating their OS. Lots of disadvantages. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. one's doing that anymore. That's like, that's so 2012. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like the new iPhone 14. Yeah. Is it? Oh. I haven't heard about that. Well, oh, what's from, it was just announced yeah, overnight. There was here, the, the, the Apple, um, you know, announced our new stuff last night. So, oh, okay. like uh, another phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. thanks so much for for sharing, Scott. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's stimulated some good discussion about you know what we could do here in New Zealand as well. So I really mm. appreciate that. Mm. Um, and yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, and thanks Ian for spreading the word about it, continue to spread the word around it. And, mm. um, and hopefully next month we can have um, a, bigger, um, a bigger group mm. of people here. Um, unfortunately, I won't be here next month because I am traveling. Um, uh, but Bram will be the point person for, um, for next month. Sweet. Um, because here's the other admin on the meetup group. You <laughs> <laughs> have to give me a key to the office. Um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get someone from uh, someone from here to uh, to uh, chaperone me. Yeah. yeah so, probably can't so do that. So probably, yeah, probably wouldn't trust me. You you met Joseph <laughs> when you came and visited last time, didn't you? Yeah, you can't remember. I his mean, name. I met Nick. Yeah. Was it Nick who runs it? He runs the building or something. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, Joseph was a young guy, was he? Younger than Nick. And me, yeah. Uh, well, well, he looks about, I don't know, 35. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So if you call him 35, young, yep. Yeah, like, I mean, younger than, not like Nick, who That's is right. old. O older yeah. than you, but. Yeah. <laughs> the young guy. Yeah. yeah, I'd say someone around my age is still considered a young guy. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that'll be Joseph. And so he, he'll be he'll be here next um, next month, and so he'll be able to let you in. Uh, let you in. And hopefully he'll turn up on time, unlike me. <laughs> it was just.